Magdalene's Blog 46 From apparent shy recluse, this woman had changed to rampant slut in no time at all, and I watched his hesitation as the ugly demon worms of lust in me reached out to suck at his life. Pulling away was not what the spirits would allow, and the poor young man quickly realised he was up against some sort of demon possession, as black anger joined the outright lust venting through me. Raw distaste turned to sheer horror and alarm. Desperately, he pushed away my clawing hands, calling out for help as he struggled and finally managed to disengage enough to turn and flee to where his shouts had aroused the other drivers. Together they did what they were good at, and drove me out of the encampment with sticks and stones. They chased me as I ran wildly, leaving everything behind except the clothes I was in. I had no choice. I don't know how long it went on, but every time I tried to rest, they were there again, beating at me if they could get close enough, or throwing stones that bit me like stinging bees when they hit. Worst of all, the spirits seemed to delight in the fear and anguish this brought to me, and they rode a wild cacophony of emotion within my tormented frame. In the end, I think I must have lost the drivers, for when I collapsed on the ground, there was no one trying to hurt me any more. Perhaps they had got me far enough away from the camp for me not to find my way back, even if I tried. Nothing remained to me but a wretchedness that would become my normal condition in the days ahead. A shivering, relentlessly miserable night followed, with no better promise than a cold and dreary dawn. When I finally did find my way back to the camp that next day, the caravan had long gone, and my donkey too. Nothing was left of my possessions. My bag was gone and my supplies with it. My travelling cloak must have been discarded in my early state of passion. Even the old green undercloak had been torn from me in my flight. I remembered that. I sat with my head in my hands and let the spirits feel my anguish. No surprise that they wallowed in the taste of it, and I had not the strength to deny them. Better rather to drown in the loss there. Eventually I got up and wandered away from the camp, having no wish to be found by another caravan, or even other travellers. I trudged roughly in the direction that I had taken the night before, with little or no let hope left for anything good. Which was when I found my priestess cloak hanging on a thorn bush by the side of the path. Such a small mercy, but one I accepted gladly, wrapping it around me like a defence against the world except that my troubles were on the inside. Accompanying me with an incessant stream of thoughts that were not my own, or were they? If anything changed in the weeks that followed, it was that it became harder to distinguish what was me and what was actually them, the devils. I knew their hunger and their thirst almost as my own. I would have even pitied them hadn't it almost immediately left me drowning in pity for myself. To die would be welcome, except that I knew I would end like the ghosts, pitiable creatures without a home of flesh and bone, warmth or feeling. I followed paths that went south, and skirted straggly villages where people made a hard living on the rocky landscape, with a few goats grazing, and rough tilled fields that yielded only a little of anything they planted. There was not much water, and I felt the lack of this more than almost anything. People that I encountered easily recognised my possessed state, and either shunned me or drove me away. Occasionally I managed to scavenge for something I could eat, whether it was discarded as rubbish or put out for animals. Well, I remembered the dumps outside the walls of the city of Antioch where the uncleans roamed, and now I understood. Understood wretchedness. I also remembered everything I had lost although distorted by my attendant demons. Remember the kindness of my friend Ariane, and then too the ancient crone who told me that I would know the need for great kindness. What an explicit truth that was to me now. All the wonderful ideas I had played with as a priestess of the goddess boiled down to just one thing, the need for release, a release that could bring me peace. Nothing else really mattered when it came down to it.
My body took more than just abuse and many beatings. It suffered awfully from lack of any kind of proper care. Half starved and with sores breaking out in many places, I got into a terrible state. I couldn't go on like this. Memories of what were done to me never left me. They were all too present, and maybe they were the reason that I couldn't give my poor body the attention it needed. Too painful to allow any relief that benefited the Magus's demons too. So much better to give them nothing but suffering as their reward. A huge and unpleasant burden that for some reason I had to carry around and couldn't be discarded because they were attached to me and I held on to them too. Their fear was my fear. Their lust was my lust. My anger was theirs, escalating it out of all proportion, but I didn't know how to let it go or to let go of them either. I was completely lost in every way.